long. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Please, thank you, please. Thank you so very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay, let's get to business. Let's get to business. All right. <laughs> so let me start by thanking my most incredible husband, Doug, for being an incredible partner to me, an incredible father to Cole and Ella, and happy anniversary, Dougie. <laughs> I love you so very much. To our President Joe Biden. When I think about the path that we have traveled together, Joe, I am filled with gratitude. Your record is extraordinary as history will show, and your character is inspiring and Doug and I love you and Jill and are forever thankful to you both. And to Coach Tim Walls, you are going to be an incredible Vice President. And to the delegates and everyone who has put your faith in our campaign, your support is humbling. So America, the path that led me here in recent weeks was no doubt unexpected. But I'm no stranger to unlikely journeys. So my mother, our mother, Shamala Harris, had one of her own and I miss her every day, and especially right now. And I know she's looking down smiling. I know that. So my mother was 19 when she crossed the world alone, traveling from India to California with an unshakable dream to be the scientist who would cure breast cancer. When she finished school, she was supposed to return home to a traditional arranged marriage. But as fate would have it, she met my father, Donald Harris, a student from Jamaica. They, they fell in love and got married, and that act of self-determination made my sister Maya and me. Growing up, we moved a lot. I will always remember that big Mayflower truck packed with all our belongings, ready to go to Illinois, to Wisconsin, and wherever our parents' jobs took us. My early memories of our parents together are very joyful ones. A home filled with laughter and music, Aretha, Coltrane and Miles at the park. My mother would say, stay close. But my father would say, as he smiled, run, Kamala, run. Don't be afraid. Don't let anything stop you. From my earliest years, he taught me to be fearless. But the harmony between my parents did not last. When I was in elementary school, they split up, and it was mostly my mother who raised us. Before she could finally afford to buy a home, she rented a small apartment in the East Bay. In the Bay, in the Bay, you either lived in the hills or the flatlands. We lived in the flats, a beautiful working class neighborhood of firefighters, nurses, and construction workers, all who tended their lawns with pride. My mother, she worked long hours. And like many working parents, she leaned on a trusted circle to help raise us. Mrs. Shelton, who ran the daycare below us and became a second mother. Uncle Sherman, 
Aunt Mary, Uncle Freddy, Auntie Chris, none of them family by blood, and all of them family by love. Family who taught us how to make gumbo, how to play chess, and sometimes even let us win. Family who loved us, believed in us, and told us we could be anything and do anything. They instilled in us the values they personified, community, faith, and the importance of treating others as you would want to be treated, with kindness, respect, and compassion. My mother was a brilliant, five-foot-tall, brown woman with an accent. And as the eldest child, as the eldest child, I saw how the world would sometimes treat her. But my mother never lost her cool. She was tough, courageous, a trailblazer in the fight for women's health. And she taught Maya and me a lesson that Michelle mentioned the other night. She taught us to never complain about injustice, but do something about it. Do something about it. That was my mother. And she taught us, and she always, she also taught us, and she also taught us, and never do anything half-assed. And that is a direct quote. <laughs> a direct quote. I grew up immersed in the ideals of the civil rights movement. My parents had met at a civil rights gathering, and they made sure that we learned about civil rights leaders, including the lawyers like Thurgood Marshall and Con Constance Baker Motley. Those who battled in the courtroom to make real the promise of America. So at a young age, I decided I wanted to do that work. I wanted to be a lawyer. And when it came time to choose the type of law I would pursue, I reflected on a pivotal moment in my life. You see, when I was in high school, I started to notice something about my best friend, Wanda. She was sad at school. And there were times she didn't want to go home. So one day I asked if everything was all right. And she confided in me that she was being sexually abused by her stepfather. And I immediately told her she had to come stay with us. And she did. This is one of the reasons I became a prosecutor, to protect people like Rhonda, because I believe everyone has a right to safety, to dignity, and to justice. As a prosecutor, when I had a case, I charged it not in the name of the victim, but in the name of the people. For a simple reason, in our system of justice, a harm against any one of us is a harm against all of us. And I would often explain this to console survivors of crime, to remind them no one should be made to fight alone. We are all in this together. And every day in the courtroom, I stood proudly before a judge and I said five words, Kamala Harris for the people. And to be clear, and to be clear, my entire career, I've only had one client, the people. And so, on behalf of the people, on behalf 
of every American, regardless of party, race, gender,